What's happening guys, Scott from A Hornet's Nest. Welcome back to episode 13 of Tutorial Tuesday. And here we are in the workshop, ready to go to unbox this incredible package. Now, if you've been following along at home on the Instagram, Facebook, Discord channels, you know what's inside here. But for those that are just joining us today, we have a full F18 cockpit frame designed by Open Hornet in here made out of MDF. It is the ultimate flat pack. It really puts Ikea to shame. But I know a lot of you on the Facebook have been commenting, where can I get one of these kits? It looks incredibly professional. How much was it? Where do I go buy one from? Unfortunately, this kit that you see here in this awesome box is not purchasable. It was cut and packaged up for me by an incredibly good friend of mine because I was really struggling finding a CNC shop that would actually cut the entire cockpit for me for a reasonable price here in Queensland. So he said, let me do it for you. He did in his own spare time and then he had to ship it interstate and to help shipping it, he actually went above and beyond and created this incredible professional looking box, which all of you now see as a kit. Well, let's get into it. What we're gonna do is we are going to unbox it. We're gonna pack it out here. We're probably gonna put the side consoles here, the upper instrument, lower instrument panels here, and maybe the center tub there. I'm gonna try get some information on the wall as we're going along, and then we're gonna get straight into it. So let's get this lid off and have a look what's inside. Now what we're looking at here is an absolute IKEA flat pack, it's perfect. We've got documentation showing all the nesting files that we use, that I'm gonna be able to cross them all off as we stack them here, making sure we've got all the pieces ready to go. There's absolutely nothing worse than when you've got a kit ready to go and you're missing a piece. So let's get into it. It's gonna be a bit of a time lapse and you're not going to want to watch me unpack every single component. So let's do it. The level of detail that's actually in this is incredible. The Open Hornet team have really gone above and beyond to create a system that is as plug and play as it gets. Now what really surprised me with these ejection seat sides is how small they actually are. I would have thought it would be bigger. Now I'm used to larger cockpits, right? But it's almost like a little bobsled. And then when you look at the geometry of a pilot in an F-18, they really are in a little bobsled. It's really cool. Now you might see, and I'll show you up on a close view, but these grooves you see all in here, are the modifications I've done to the Open Hornet system. I've put them in there so when I make it on camera for you, they're gonna snap into place and they're gonna be perfectly aligned. There's nothing worse than watching somebody struggle to align something on a YouTube video, and then it just kind of puts you off watching it all together. So yeah, that's what these grooves are for. Um, just so you know, you're not going to see them on the Open Hornet files. They are a modification I've added. Can I suggest if you're going to do this? Don't do it during summer. It's like 32 degrees at the moment. Um, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a hard task, but it's gonna be worth it. Because when you tell your friends that you've got an F-18 cockpit in your house, oh man. Ooh, how good that's gonna be. So I found a little piece here that the mate who cut this out for me is a massive Harrier fan. And I keep giving him rubbish about the Harrier despite its pros and cons. And he said, I'll engrave it for you on the base so I can put a Harrier somewhere. And he has. And it's a very classy Harrier. So I can't even be annoyed at it, despite the fact that I give him rubbish for flying the Harrier all the time. So yes, very classy. I guess this is our last big behemoth. Put that one away. Look at that. Well, there we got it. That is about it. We have completely unpacked it. 
and I don't even want to know how many pieces this is. But yeah, that is the entire cockpit unpacked. Every MDF piece required, including all the stringers, anything that could be CNC cut, we CNC cut it. And I'm instantly thinking this is a lot bigger of a job than I thought it was going to be. So let's get into it. We're going to start some surface prep now. All we're going to do is a bit of a light sand on the edges, and then we're going to apply an undercoat just to seal all that MDF in. I'm planning on undercoating it with a dark gray. Then I'm actually putting the primer green on top. And the reason for that is to get that primer green color that looks like it's been painted onto aluminum, you've got to undercoat it with a silver or a gray. And then we're going to top coat it with the color that the cockpit is. And the reason for that is, is just so if it wears over time, you're going to see that chroma green coming through. I'm just going to show you now what I mean by these tongue and grooves. Now, if I pick up these four backrest pieces here, and I believe this piece back here, and we just bring them to the workbench, you can see that I've gone and put these tongue and groove slots into it. Now, this has come from when I was talking to my mate who was gonna cut it out for me. I said, what's the easiest way for me to ensure that it's aligned? I don't wanna be stuffing around with angles and getting it misaligned. And he said, well, try this technique. And not only does it align it, but it snaps in so easily. So what you can see here is we've got half width tongues and full width tongues. The half width ones allow it to snap into here so easily and you don't even know that the tongue and groove system is in there. And we can snap that in there like that. And snap these in here like that. Now, pieces that I have gone and actually seen to be specific to a side, I've gone and adjusted that tongue and groove so they don't just go and slot in. Like these two here. Now, I'm pretty sure if we have to have a look, it's, you can see these have two different sizes and they're ever so slightly different. And I'm pretty sure the small one goes in there and the big one goes in there. And then you've pretty much got your seat ready to go. It's very, very cool. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is grab our ribs for the right side console. And you can see here, they are all ready to go. Now, I've gone and actually marked these with letters and they very lightly engraved into it, just in the bottom right hand corner here and here, allowing me to know what rib it is, making it easy to identify. Now all we're gonna to wanna to do is take a little block of sandpaper, 150 grits fine, I've even got a little roll here of 400, which is even finer. And it's just gonna take the burrs off the edges. You just wanna smooth those edges out. You don't wanna make them completely round, but you also wanna take that sharpness away from it. The solid sanding block is really good for taking those drill hole burrs out. So you know you're gonna get a nice finish. You're not gonna sand a divot into it. I've even gone and done the tongue and groove for the stringers as well, just because you want as much to align as possible. The only thing I didn't do the tongue and groove for were the little bits that kind of connect the ribs. Don't know why I didn't do them, but yeah, they should be easy enough to just screw in. If the rest aligns, it should pretty much sit there. Now there's little burrs just there from where the machine was um, cutting on it. If you could just grab yourself a three quarter inch or 18 mil chisel, just with the back end flat against it, just go and cut them off. Don't try sand burrs off, you're just gonna create more burrs. Just cut them off with a real sharp chisel and you'll be good to go.
careful not to take too much. And that is pretty much it. Lovely. Beautiful, alrighty. Let's go remove some of this stuff and we are going to go make some space ready for the painting. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna move this just over here and then just prior to painting, give your pieces a bit of a wipe down as well. You don't want to be spraying the paint onto them with the dust still there, but we'll do that off camera. There we go. Alrighty, so that's pretty much done. All we've got to do is put a tent over there and then I will see you once we're ready to go. So what we're gonna to need to do so we're gonna get some of our pieces and we are gonna take them into the tent. Now this is a Wagner large spray tent. It's pretty good for a job like this. Fits most of your pieces. I've got a sawhorse and then we've got our Wagner Flexio spray system as well. And it's gonna keep everything nice and clean. If we have a look at the sawhorses, you can see that I've actually gone and screwed some conduit onto each of it in a double rail. And the reason for that is it's such a small surface area connecting with the bottom of the piece that you're not gonna get any paint seeping underneath. And even if you do, it's gonna be a quick sand off. Whereas if you had it flat here, it's gonna take forever to sand and clean up the bottom if any wet paint seeps under. So remember, let's take a quick rag and we're gonna go and start wiping our pieces down before we spray them. Now remember this undercoat that we're doing is a very light misty layer. We're not doing anything, anything heavy. We don't want to over dimension the piece. We just want to seal the MDF and then we can assemble it as a full assembly and then we can apply the coats of paint. There we go, look at that. So the paint we're using today, we're using a Taubman 3-in-1 primer. Not too bad for MDF, it's just an acrylic water-based paint. And you'll see that it's not your usual color. The color we got here is a darker gray. And the reason for that is this color here, which is a almost a chromate green, needs the dark gray underlay to create that muted green color. If I just applied the gecko from Dulux straight away, it would be too light and we wouldn't get the color I was after. So like that. Now, if you're gonna be doing painting like this, if you're using the Wagner system, turn your feed nozzle so it's pointing forward. That way, as you're spraying down, it's gonna be able to siphon it out of the pot. Let's go get ourselves a wet rag, that way any spills we do, we can clean up. Now, you'll see that I've gone and actually brought a little jug of water here, and the reason for that is the Torbman's 3-in-1 is a acrylic based paint, it's water dilutable. If it's too thick for the sprayer, I can just dilute it down, it's almost like using an airbrush. You want the texture that's pouring into the pot or what's in the pot almost like a, a warm honey, something that just runs really easy off the spatula. Having a good, clean paint etiquette when you're doing tubs like this is important for jobs like these because you don't want it 
to get all over the place. Now, if we go and grab our spatula, it's not terrible, but it could do with a little dilution. And the Wagner system comes with the sawtooth spatula, which shows you what 10% dilution is. And that's their recommendation. If it's too thick, just do 10% and that should fix it. There we go. And that there is already looking better. This almost looks like the color that we're gonna paint the pit, but it's not. I'm purely painting it a dark gray, so the green looks good. And then I'm gonna spray over the top of the green. There we go. That is a better consistency. Now remember, if it still isn't spraying nice and you're getting a really coarse cool spray pattern, just dilute it some more. Keep a wet rag around it, that way it's not going to dry on there if you have to stir it again. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start and we're just gonna do some horizontal sweeping patterns across the boards. And it's okay if we get a bit of back, back spray on the tent, it's gonna get covered with paint anyway. The biggest thing with the tent is it's gonna stop us from having a lot of paint particles just floating around. Now, if you wanna wear a respirator, go for it, but we're pretty much outdoors, so you don't really need one unless you're a bit sensitive to that sort of stuff. So let's get into it. Light Misty Coats, we're not here to paint the final coat, we're just here to prime it. And there we've got it just like that. We've got the gray down. It is looking very cool. It's got a ever so slight coarseness to it, uh, but that's gonna naturally mat itself down as it levels because it's a wet coat. You don't wanna to paint too dry to it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna continue painting the rest. I'm just gonna work our way through the cockpit. And the next time I see you out here is when we go and assemble the right-hand side console because we are in the process of building the F-18. So, as always, stay safe, enjoy your flight simming. I can't believe we're doing it, this is very cool. So yeah, go enjoy your week ahead and I'll see you in the next video.